Welcome back to another video for the All Takes No Whiffs podcast. Uh, we are have another solid video lined up uh, for this one. We are going to be recapping the fights from last weekend on the top ranked card, the FAA Jagba uh, card. Um, pretty decent card overall. The main event wasn't the best, but I mean, the undercard with all those stacked prospects was great. Um, but before we get started, uh, something that we will probably be doing a little more here. Uh, We'll be shouting out some people in our comment section after videos. Um, we've gotten some comments in the past few videos that uh, we'd like to shout out. Um, okay, Okoro, he said Ajazba has cleaned up his faults. Uh, he was going to win by KO against Shaw. Um, he did win, didn't get the KO, but uh, we love the uh, pick and the prediction. And then Ron Sizzle 402 said, great card. I think Bruce wins by knockout. Um, Bruce didn't win by knockout, but still, Bruce looks really good. I'm really excited with Carrington, and uh, we'll get into it uh, later on in this video. But, Christian, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, good picks, guys. Obviously, the results were a little different, but that's all good. You guys were along the lines, and let us know your next pick soon because you guys are on it. But as for this uh, previous card, I'm looking forward to going over it, There's, like Alex said. Uh, stacked prospects on this card, and I'm looking forward to getting into this. For last weekend's top-ranked card, uh, headlined by F.A. Jagba versus Stephen Shaw, we'll be getting into that for a second, but before that, uh, a couple of fights that were on the undercard that we really feel like that we should discuss. Uh, you had Brian Norman Jr. defeating Rodrigo Damian Correa by unanimous decision. This was an exciting fight. Uh, Brian Norman did his thing, uh, got through quite a challenge, though, and I want to see your thoughts on this, Alex. Yeah, this is a really good fight for Brian Norman. Um, I mean, this was a good step up for him. Uh, Coria had – he was really good test for him. It was a nice step up. Um, the first round, I mean, dude came out guns blazing. I mean, I thought the fight was going to be over in the first minute of this fight. Uh, the way the fact that Corio was still up after about the first two minutes of the fight was kind of surprising to be honest because this dude hit him with about everything you can think of. He hit him in the head with hooks, he hit him in the body, hit him with uppercut. I mean, anything that you can think of, he hit him with. And the fact that this guy made it through all eight rounds too was uh pretty surprising after that first round, but um, I can kind of see why because Norman got tired uh around the fifth round, fourth round. Uh, Looked like he was kind of gassed out. Um, he, he dominated, though, the first couple rounds. Um, and uh, he did get a knockdown in the eighth round. Uh, Norman did. So I think that's kind of what uh, got him the win for this. Um, I know the scorecards are a little, not the closest, but um, that knockdown made it a little, uh, a little further than what it actually was. But I liked what I saw from this guy. He's a he's a kid who's from around where we live, so uh, this is a guy that I'll definitely be watching in the future. Solid prospect. And he hadn't gotten past the seventh round before this fight, so it was uh, nice to see him go all eight. I feel that. Uh, definitely a good step up, like you said. Uh, Korea had made it a tough fight, but it's good to see Brian Norman uh, tough it out and get the victory. My thing is, it's interesting – you mentioned that he uh, he gassed out a little. That That's an issue that could always be addressed uh, through better conditioning. But it's I do think it's a good sign to see that he got an eighth-round knockdown, even though he uh, gassed out. That just shows that he can, uh, through some adversity, still get things done. So I feel like that's a promising sign for Bri uh, Brian Norman. Yeah, I think you said that spot on. Because I think Timothy Bradley during the fight actually said that uh, Norman thought fought through some adversity through this fight. So, uh, I mean, you're spot on with that, to be honest. But I'm excited to see where this guy goes next. Um, it's only the third time he's been uh, through the entire uh, fight. So let's see if he can get himself a little a little 10-round matchup next, uh, see who uh, is on deck for him. But to move on to – the next uh, fight of this car that we're gonna, we covered, uh, Bruce Carrington. Uh, Bruce Shushu Carrington. I love the nickname, to be honest. Uh, this dude, he's pure. He is probably one of the best uh, prospects out there right now. He may be one of the best top-ranked prospects there is right now. Um, this dude looked really good throughout the entire fight. Only six-round fight, but uh, looked solid. Punches were clean. Punches were crisp. Uh, 
one thing about him is that he was count he, he counters really nice but he gets hit a little bit too so it it kind of takes a hit to give a hit for him mm-hmm. and um i think as he gets a little more experience um under his belt that he will probably not be getting hit as much because this guy is pretty polished already and he's only been or had six professional fights I feel that it's definitely good to see Bruce Carrington come out with the victory. Uh, it looked like he didn't really struggle with anything. Uh, the scorecards definitely make it seem like that. And I'm just excited to see what he what's up next for him because, as Alex said, uh, he's got the tools, and it's it's only going to get better as he uh, moves up because he's going to have to get better the better. Uh, once he's facing higher caliber fighters, that's just something that you got to be on top of. And yeah, uh, taking one to give one, that, that's always effective when when you can. But sometimes sometimes when you get beat, that, that, uh, that one that you take, that might be the difference maker right there. So that's not something that he wants to do for uh, long term, basically. But to move on to another highly touted prospect that was on this card, you had Haven Brady Jr., who defeated Ruben Severa. He defeated him by unanimous decision. And that was an interesting fight as well. Uh, the scorecards definitely show that Haven Brady separated himself. It wasn't something that was heavily contested. And it's just good to see him keep his undefeated record. Yeah, I wasn't thoroughly impressed with uh, Haven Brady. I don't think this was his best performance ever, but um, he still dominated this fight pretty easily. Um, He worked the body really well in this fight. Um, That's one thing I really like to see out of him. But, uh, I mean, to be honest, uh, there's really not too much to talk about this. This wasn't the most entertaining fight. um, But uh, Haven Brady uh, would definitely like to see uh, a little more power out of him, though. Yeah, I feel that. And luckily at this point in his career that this is the time to uh, address those things. So I feel like in his next outing, we'll see uh, those issues addressed. But another fight that was on this card, I was excited to see this guy back in the ring after he was uh, brutally knocked out in this fight before. But you had Abraham Nova defeating Adam Lopez. He won by unanimous decision. And uh, these scorecards, as even though they're wide, uh, from what I've heard, that doesn't really show what this fight was. Uh, I've heard that this was a really exciting fight, and I want to see your thoughts on this real quick, Alex. Yeah, so this was actually on Abraham Nova's birthday, too, so he got a nice little birthday dub to go along with it, but Christian's absolutely right. Uh, the first four rounds of this fight, absolute toss-up. I had no idea, honestly, who won the first four rounds. Um, those, It was a pretty intense fight. Uh Guys were throwing uh, punches left and right. Nova's power was ridiculous in this fight, to be honest. And Lopez, I, I think I heard him say something. One of the cameras may have caught it, but I said, he, he said your power is something different. Uh, but uh, I really did enjoy this fight. Lopez is one of those guys who is really – he's run into some really good people. He's been a nice test for people, but he just can't get over that hump of beating the mm-hmm. – like not cream of the crop guys, but guys who are kind of getting there. And Abraham Nova is one of those guys. Um, I like his style too. Um, it's really nice, but uh, Lopez got knocked down in the sixth round, actually. So, um, or in, in the fifth and sixth round, uh, it was the fifth time that Lopez had been knocked down in his career. But I mean, he got back up and he fought really well. Lopez in his previous fight had actually been knocked down and then ended up winning that fight. So the whole time, after he got knocked down, all the announcers were talking about, oh, is he going to win the fight since he got knocked down? <laughs> I mean, he honestly mm-hmm. could have if you really think about it. I mean, the scorecards I don't think should have been this wide, but the two knockdowns do help it. The second knockdown was yeah. kind of iffy. I don't, I don't I don't, think the second one was a knockdown in the sixth round, to be honest. No, I feel that. I really wish I tuned in, but uh, luckily I will be seeing Abraham Nova's next fight. And I just wanted to see your thoughts on what do you think is next for Abraham Nova? Because I know he was kind of on a interesting trajectory before uh, his knockout loss in his fight before this one. So do you think this maybe gets him back on track or he's got some more things to work on first? 
he did look really good in this fight, but I would probably give him one more fight until he he really takes that major step up. Um, uh, Adam Lopez is a really good uh, fighter and is like great competition for someone like him right now. But I think he needs to take one more step up from that before he gets uh, really into maybe that title contention into a contender. But I will say right at the bell, he landed a freaking nasty right hook. I mean, it, it was just for the 10th round too. Like right at the end of the fight. I mean, you could mm-hmm. hear the thud. It, it was really nice. And you could see the reaction from Lopez. And he was like, damn. <laughs> I mean, eh. Nova, yeah, he was he was definitely on course to be in the mix soon before that knockout loss. And I'm just kind of glad to see him bouncing back like this because I, I think he can make an, an interesting fight uh, the way he brings it. So hopefully we can see him back in the mix. Hopefully he gets another fight soon that will uh, lead him to that. But mm-hmm. as for the main event of this card, you had F.A. Jagba against Steven Shaw and... The way this played out, uh, I Jogba won. He he proved us wrong, I guess. But I don't really have too much to say about this, considering that uh, from what I've heard, this is this was hard to watch. Yeah, and his name is actually Stephen Shaw. We did not know that beforehand, oh. um, so we apologize for calling him Stephen. But uh, it's actually Stephen Shaw. I meant to tell you that before we started recording. My bad, Christian. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Christian's right. This is an absolute snooze fest. The first four rounds, five rounds of this fight were absolutely hard to watch. Um, Ijagwa's corner after that, from like the sixth round on, was literally telling him that he needs to do something. He needs to be more active. Um, Ijagba definitely did look better, um, but Stefan Shaw, uh, everything I talked about in last video and how I thought he would bring it to him, um, he his defense and everything was great. Uh, I just didn't see it, to be honest. Um, I, you saw it at times, but he didn't put it together throughout the entire fight. Neither guy was the aggressor in this fight either. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it just came for an absolute snooze fest, to be honest. Timothy Bradley even said that. Um, but, yeah, this was... Not the most entertaining of fights, but um, I guess Ajagba maybe be looking to be moving up those rankings now. I know he was a 15th ranked heavyweight before this, but um, I don't think he's ready for a contending fight yet. Um, I, I just don't see it yet. Yeah, I feel that. And especially in this case where we thought of uh, Stephen, Stephen Shaw as uh, more of the boxer type. You would at least expect Jagba to be the aggressor, but the fact that there is no aggressor in this fight, in a heavyweight fight, yeah, that just sounds that sounds horrible. Mm-hmm. And not that I don't want to see Jagba uh, improve. It's just I, I wonder how much room he has to improve. Really, like how much could he add to his? He, he, he still so. he still he has a lot. I feel like I feel like he's he's actually. Okay. I feel like he can polish up a lot of stuff better and he actually become like a, a pure boxer. I mean, this he's got the power for it. It's just that get the technical stuff out of the way and you, he can be a he can be a name to deal with in the heavyweight division. He is a little smaller than some of them, but yeah, I, I noticed that he he's like a more of like one of the skinnier heavyweights. But I don't know. I with the Jogba, I, I think like you said, he does have potential. I, I just. I guess I need to see those strides actually being taken once I can say before I can say that I'm I'm back on the the hype train, I guess, because like you said, the potential is through the roof. The power is mm-hmm. insane. Just piecing all that stuff together and you got a dangerous fighter. And that, that that's all it really is. And hopefully that that's how it pans out because a jog, he he's fun to watch when he's on top of his shit. Yeah, I mean, these guys were talking their shit before the fight uh, all week. Uh, um, I mean, at the presser, we saw Ijagba, what he did at the weigh-in. I mean, it's the way it was led up, it did not play out like it, it was supposed to. Um, it, it was led up to be a guy, two guys who wanted to go beat each other down, and it just didn't happen. <laughs> That's boxing, though, full of surprises. That's how it be. But it was a solid card overall. Uh, top oh, great card, to be you know, honest. Yeah, they did their thing. And I like those cards where, where it's like, yeah, there's, it might not be the biggest headliner, but it's full of like solid 
on up and coming names. I, I'm a fan of those cards, so solid card for sure. Yeah, definitely a solid card. And there was two. Uh, there was actually three fights we didn't talk about. Uh, one of them ended in a sixth round stoppage from a cut. Uh, that was the main event. It was Johnny Rice and Guido Vanella or something like that. Um, Johnny Rice ended up winning that. Um, Dante Benjamin Jr. had a first round knockout too. Uh, it was pretty quick fight. Uh, that was only a four round fight though, but that's a prospect to keep some eyes on. And Bryce Mills, he also had a dominant six round performance um there really wasn't too much to talk about with him so that's why we didn't talk about it but uh he absolutely dominated his fight but this was a really good card in general um and we uh we got some more stuff for y'all coming up uh later on in the week and that does it for another boxing video for the all takes no whiffs podcast uh this is a great recap video um really enjoyed talking about some of these guys and i'm really looking forward to seeing where some of these prospects are going in the future but if you like this video, uh, if you like our content, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you turn on notifications so that when we, to know when we post new content. And also, let us know in the comments below what you thought about these fights and uh, which one of these prospects you're looking forward to most in the future. Um, I'm really looking forward to Bruce Carrington, so that's the guy I'm going to be paying close attention to. And if you guys want, you can let us know your thoughts on any of our social media pages. If you want, you could find our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook all at ATNW Podcast. And if you want, you can find my personal Instagram and Twitter at Christian underscore S52. And you can find mine at AND2215. But that does it for another video of the All Takes No Whiffs podcast. And we're looking forward to next weekend's preview. Peace. Peace.